Have you ever been listening to a band and one person got really offbeat? Or maybe you were playing an instrument and you couldn't figure out why you sounded so out of tune. Music is made up of notes, but it's nothing without the application of math principles that tell us when and how to play. I sat down with an accomplished musician and music educator to discuss the unknown hero of music that is math. You're watching I Heart STEM. Today we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. Math is the language to talk about music. It's how we notate and communicate music in a universal way. Music can be understood by thinking about it as a numeric system in which each note is represented by a number, which serves as a guide as to how well those notes will or won't come together in a song. Notes can be played in chords or sequentially. Because each note played represents a pitch, certain chords or sequences sound good together. And keeping those chords or sequences in the same mathematical relationship creates music we in the Western world want to hear. Take an example from a seven note scale that we've all probably heard, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. Now, each of those syllables represents a pitch on the diatonic scale, but you can think about these as numbers one through seven. So if someone said, create a three note chord, you need to know where to start and where to place the other two notes. Now, because of the math and music, if a musician says, build a tonic triad, then because you know the math, you're gonna know that that means notes one, three, and five, and you can build it in any key. Rhythm is dependent on the timing of music, which is actually a whole bunch of app rules. When you look at a song, you may have noticed the beginning of a song or between two bars in a section of a song, two numbers on top of each other. This is called a time signature. This tells a musician how to count each measure as well as what the rhythmic feel will be. The top number represents the number of notes per measure. The bottom number represents what types of notes will be counted in each measure. Now this doesn't mean you can only use the exact number in the denominator as notes, but it will impact your rhythm. For example, if you wanna speed up the pace, you divide up the beats. Now to know what you're allowed to divide the beats by, you've also got to look at the bottom number. If there's a four on the bottom, that means you can divide by two, which gives you a March-like feel and is called symbol beat division. If there's eight on the bottom, you can divide by three. This gives you more of a swing feel and is called compound beat division. Now, after you divide those eighth notes by three the first time though, you can only then divide them by two. Other things will impact the rhythm, such as emphasizing a certain note and certain time signatures tend to be used for certain types of music because of the rhythm they create. In simple terms, one of the conductor's jobs is to ensure a whole bunch of people know how to count together and stay on the beat. Sounds comical when you say it out loud, but there's a lot of complexity to ensuring 20 plus people are playing the right note on the right beat on different instruments as planned. Think about it. Have you ever done a soul cycle or a yoga class and everyone was supposed to do the same move at the same time? It's so easy to get out of sync. Now think about it in terms of the complexities of music. The right hand of the conductor keeps everyone on track through a series of standard motions that's dependent on the time signature, which by the way, can change throughout a song, making it even more complicated. If a song has two beats, the conductor does hand motions across the body to the right and back up. If there's four beats, they do a motion down the chest, to the left, to the right and back up. Now sound travels. So depending on where you're sitting, you may be hearing the music on a delay so you can't rely on your ears. In addition, think about how many musicians have to start and stop throughout a song taking pauses so it's really important to understand what the beats represent in the hand motion so you can keep up. Music is composed of sound waves, which is measured by how quickly they move per second. The frequency directly relates to the pitch. The higher the frequency, the higher pitch noise we'll hear. For string instruments, this is important because if you change the length of the string, you'll change the pitch. For example, if you place your hand on the halfway point on a string and then play it, you now have half the frequency and the pitch is gonna be exactly an octave higher. Overall, this is important because what it means is the position on string instruments is mathematically calculated to change the distance in a specific way to make a specific pitch. For brass instruments, it's a similar but different application. How can you play up to three octaves on a trumpet with only three valves? Well, the pitch on a trumpet is gonna be related to the length of the tube. Which valves you press and how hard you blow into the trumpet is dependent on what pitch you wanna create, which is based on an equation. For non-percussion instruments like a harp or piano, when you play a note, other strings sympathetically vibrate along with it and create notes that are actually multiples in frequency of the original note. Bonus material, if you really want to immerse yourself in how math, science, and music relate, look up the overtone theory. 
I went to a performance of Handel's Messiah recently and had such a bigger appreciation of the performance after all these learnings, even though I did take piano for 10 years. Now that's a wrap. I hope everyone is enjoying I Heart STEM. We're gonna take a little break in the series just to make it even better. I wish everyone a very happy new year. I'll see you in a couple weeks.